Hi everyone, a blessed and wonderful day to all of us. May God's guidance and protection be upon us always. Okay, so this presentation is the second topic for this week. Before we continue with our topic or with our presentation, let me again present to you this disclaimer slide. So, this presentation, we will talk about the physical examination of the reproductive system, which is the second topic for this week. Okay, so the reproductive system is intimately intertwined with the person's self-concept. The cultural and the religious beliefs and attitudes also influence a person's reproductive knowledge and health care. So, sensitive care by all nurses is important. So, in this presentation, we will talk about the female and the male reproductive system. So, these are the learning objectives of this presentation. So, at the end of this presentation, the student will be able to describe the anatomy and physiology of the female and male reproductive systems. Okay. Obtain an accurate history of the reproductive system. Explain appropriate technique in examining external reproductive structures. Differentiate between the normal and the abnormal findings in the reproductive system. And finally, we'll be able to accurately document subjective and objective findings. And of course, we'll be able to create programs or health teaching for health promotion. Okay, so let us start with our discussion on the female reproductive system or a review of her anatomy and physiology on the female reproductive system. So as a nurse or as a nursing student, it is important to explain the anatomy and physiology of the reproductive system to the patients. Therefore, it is also important that you know the anatomy and physiology because later you will be interviewing your patient okay, for a thorough uh, system history. And it is important to recognize between normal and abnormal external genitalia. So this knowledge will allow the nurse or the nursing student to educate the patients about their reproductive systems in order to promote optimal health and function and also to assess the family with family planning and to prevent the spread of STD or sexually transmitted infections and of course promote early recognition of problems for referral to an advanced practice nurse or to a physician just in case uh, meron tayo abnormal findings so the anatomy of the external female genitalia or the vulva includes the mons pubis which is a hair covered fat pod overlaying the symphysis pubis the labia Matura, it is a rounded folds or adipose tissue, while the labia minora is a thinner pinkish red folds that extends anteriorly to form the prefuse and the clitoris. So, so the labia minora. Okay, so the vestibule, you have here the vestibule, which is a boat shape channel or a fossa that is located between the labia minora. So, in its posterior portion lies the vaginal opening. Okay? And then, 
the introitus, which is in woman who has never had intercourse, may be hidden by the hymen. Okay. So, on other uh, parts of the reproductive system. So, this is the Bartholin glands, no? the location of the Bartholin glands that lubricates the, the vagina. Okay, so the vagina lies almost at the right angle to the uterus. Okay, so it's here. A thick walled uh, fibromuscular structure that's shaped like an inverted pear in your alpine uterus. Okay, its convex upper surface is the uterine fundus. Okay. And then uh, the body of the uterus or the corpus um, and the cylindrical cervix inferiorly are joined at the eastmost. Okay. So the uterine walls um, contain three layers. Okay, may three layers yung ating uterus. We have the perimetrium, okay, with its uh, serosal coating from the perineum, the myometrium, in sa gitna niya, or uh, it is a distensible ma smooth muscle, and the endometrium, okay, that is, which is the adherent inner coating. So, the vaginal surface of the cervix. Okay, let's look, look at here. So, the ectocervix or ectocervix is seen easily with the help of a speculum. So, if you have the speculum, okay, this is usually done by the OP. No? It, uh, at its center is a round oval or a slit-like depression. Okay, the external OS of the cervix, which marks the opening into the uh, endocervical canal. Okay. And then, the ectocervix, okay, is covered by, by the flashy red columnar epithelium that surrounds the OS and lines the endocervical canal. Okay, and by a shiny, a pink squamous epithelium continues with the vaginal lining. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so to continue with the female reproductive system, we also have the lymphatics or the lymph from the vulva and the lower vagina that drains into the inguinal nodes. The lymph from the internal genitalia, including the upper vagina, flows into the pelvic and the abdominal lymph nodes, which are not palpable. Okay, so let's talk about the health history. Of course, you have to take note or you have to... Uh, focus on the following common concerns, okay? Menarche or um, the first menstruation, menstruation, uh, menopause, postmenopausal bleeding, dysmenorrhea, pregnancy, contraception or use of contraceptives, vulvovaginal symptoms, sexual preference, and the sexual response. Also, the sexually transmitted infections or STIs. So, we will discuss each of this in the next slide. Okay. So, there are three parts of a woman's reproductive history that is important uh, that you gather the following, no? The menstrual history, the obstetric history, and the sexual history. Okay. So, there are five phases of reproductive health. We have the pre-puberty, which is during pre-menstruation, puberty or during menarche, childbearing, okay, menstruation, and perimenopausal and menopausal stage. Okay. 
So, these are the helpful definitions no, as we move forward with our uh, menstrual history. So, when we say menses, that refers to monthly flow of bloody fluid from the uterus. When we say menarg, it is the age of onset of menses. Kung kailan siya nagdalaga. Menopause is that refers to the absence of menses for 12 consecutive months, usually occurring between four, uh, age 48 and 55 years. When we say perimenopause, this refers to the period of years during which a woman transitions to menopause. And the postmenopausal bleeding refers to bleeding occurring six months or more after cessation of menses. So, uh, let us continue with the following uh, definitions that are important for you to understand. When we say aminoria, this means absence of menses. Dysmenorrhea refers to pain with menses. Premenstrual syndromes of P or PMS refers to a cluster of emotional behavior and physical symptoms occurring five days before the menses for three consecutive cycles. And another uh, term here is abnormal uterine bleeding, refers to the bleeding between menses or infrequent, excessive, prolonged, or postmenopausal bleeding. Okay, so to continue with our menstrual history, okay, we have the frequency, which refers to uh, measured from first day of one menses to the first day of the next menses. And then the interval between the periods ranges roughly from 24 to 32 days. And then duration refers to the number of days the flow lasts, usually three to seven days. Okay, so it is important to note the following, no? the menor, the menstruation, or menopause. You can, again, uh, start or you can utilize part of the old card. When did you start okay, having your menstruation or menor? When did your last period start? Okay, ibig sabihin, kailan yung unang araw ng iyong last period? How often do you have periods? Okay, how long though the last? Okay, what color is the flow? Is it bright red or dark red? Okay, how heavy is the flow? Okay, to check this one, you can ask the clients how many pods that she is using in a day. How many pods ang nagagamit niya or nakakailang beses siyang mag-change? Uh, ano ba ang klaseng pods na ginagamit niya? Makapal ba or yung money piece? Ayan. Okay. So, you can continue also by asking uh, do you feel or do you have or do you experience this minoria? How about premenstrual syndrome? Okay, do you experience emotional and behavioral symptoms like uh, depression, angry outburst, poor concentration, irritability, anxiety, confusion, crying spells, or sleep disturbance? Okay, so do you have a minoria or hindi nagkaroon sa loob ng ilang buwan? Abnormal uterine bleeding. When we say abnormal uterine bleeding, ibig sabihin, uh, kahit hindi na panahon ng kanyang period, siya nagkakaroon pa rin ay may mga discharges. Okay? Okay, so you can check uh, for menopause. Okay? Kung nagmi-menopause na ba si client, you have to check for the age of the client. Okay? Because menopause usually occurs between age 48 and 55 years old. Okay, or is there perimenopausal sign, uh, the onset of variable cycle length? Uh, meron ba siyang experience na hot flashes, flashing, and sweating? Or after menopause, is there vaginal dryness, dysparionia, mild hirsutism, and hair loss? 
hisperonia uh, meaning um, pain uh, during intercourse. So now let's move on to uh, observation. Obstetric history. Okay, so for pregnancy, you now we have the following terms that again it is important for you to remember. So we have the gravida, which refers to the total number of pregnancies. Okay, naka ilang pagbubuntis, kahit na, na, nakunan or abortion yung basta uh, usapan dito is naka ilang pagbubuntis para or the outcomes of pregnancy. Okay, F uh, refers to full term, P premature, A um, refers to abortion, and L refers to living child. That's okay. So, um, to continue with the pregnancy, so early symptoms, nagkaroon ng aminoria, so hindi na nagkaroon ng menstruation. There is tenderness or pain. There is tingling or increased size of breast. There is also urinary frequency kasi lumalaki, no? May lumalaki dyan sa, sa uterus. Of course, nangiitot din ang blood or, okay? Nausea and vomiting. Easy fatigability. Feeling like the baby is moving. Yan. So, you can also check kung... Um, about contraception, okay, what methods are the patient using? Is it injectable, pills, condom, etc.? So, are you satisfied with the method chosen? Yeah. Those are just example questions. Okay, so for the vulvovaginal symptoms, uh, one of the most common is or our vaginal discharge and local itching. Again, you can utilize or you can use your old part in your assessment. Okay, the amount of the vaginal discharge. Okay, the color, the consistency, the odor. Is there local sores or lumps? Is it painful? Okay, you can use alternative uh, terms that are uh, at the level of understanding of your client. Okay, for the sexual health, okay, so sexual health plays an important and natural role in overall well-being. So, kasama yan sa ating Maslow's hierarchy of needs, diba? Okay, so patients immediately sense your receptiveness to their concerns in this sensitive and vital issue or area. Okay. So, in gathering the information, it is important to remember the following. You have to maintain a neutral, non-judgmental tone. This helps your patient feel safe and be able to trust you with their concerns. You have to be aware of your own body language, okay? Your facial expressions and the tone of your voice. Baka naman gulat na gulat ka or yung expression ng face mo, okay? Ang snap ka. So, consider asking the parents to leave the room when you working when, or when you are working with the younger patients and adolescents. You can use neutral and non-judgmental questions, okay? And use patient language in follow-up questions. Paano ba yun? Okay, you restate, no? Kung ano yung sinabi ni patient. So, these are the tips for taking sexual history. So, it's important that you explain the need for sexual history taking, why it is important, okay? Uh, because it is part of your nursing care or patient care. Note that you, real, you realize information is highly personal and you encourage the patient to be open and direct. And then you relate uh, those information that you gather um, with all the patients and then affirm that your conversation is of course confidential kailan marunong kayo magtago ng secreto secret or rather or secrets okay 
Okay, for sexual orientation and gender identity, remember that direct questions may be difficult to answer due to past experiences. Therefore, ask neutral questions about sexual orientation and gender identity. So, wide range of response includes a heterosexual or a straight, lesbian, gay, women who have sex with women, men who have sex with men or MSM, bisexual, transsexual, and questioning. So, to continue with the sexual orientation and gender identity, so you can ask your client, are you currently dating? Are you sexually active? Or are you in a relationship? How would you describe sexual orientation? How would you describe gender identity? These are the sample questions, no? Do you uh, use birth control? Which method? Do you use protection against STI or sexually transmitted infections? Uh, which method? Yeah. Has anyone touched or tried to have sex with you uh, without your consent? Is there any problem with sex? Are you satisfied with your sex life? How satisfied is your sexual partner? Sa are you satisfied with the frequency of sex? Or are you comfortable with your partner's sexual practices? Okay. With the sexual response, you can use direct questions to assess each phase. Have you interest in sex? Do you get sexually aroused? Are you able to uh, reach the climax? Or do you experience this paranoia? Or do you experience or are you experiencing vaginismus? So remember that if the patient is concerned about sexual activity, you can ask her to tell you about them. Okay? Okay, so for sexually transmitted infections, please note the local symptoms or findings on examination. You have to inquire about sexual contacts. Ilan ba? Okay, you have to establish a number of sexual partners in past 3 to 6 months. Nakailan ang sexual partner niya. You have to ask about concerns for HIV. And you can ask about oral or anal sex and then you can review the past history of STI. So let's have a break or a um, icebreaker by asking you this question. Secondary amenorrhea may be caused by which of the following? Choose all that apply. Stress, pregnancy, lactation, and menopause. So what's your answer? Okay, I'll give you five seconds. All right, so let's check for the correct answer. Okay, so this is the answer to questions number two. So the secondary amenorrhea may be caused by the following. Of course, distress, pregnancy, lactation, menopause. This means that all of the situations may, in, may induce secondary amenorrhea in a patient. So let's move on. So after having your health history, let us now confirm those findings by doing the physical examination. So, it is important or the important areas of examination includes the following, no? the external examination of the mons pubis, okay, the labia majura and minora, the urethral meatus, the clitoris, and the vaginal introitus, and of course, the peritoneum. So, many women feel anxious or uncomfortable before and during examination. So, it is because some of the women may have uh, uh, feel pain or 
faint, painful or it is because it is embarrassing okay or even it uh it is the mean experiences during um uh, previous examinations so maybe others this is just their first time so medyo nahihiya pa or natatakot so as a nurse or as a nursing student it is important for you to ask the, the patient's permission to perform the examination and you have to show courtesy and respect of course and assure that all the, the informations that you will gather will be keep confidential okay so demonstrate with three dimensional models especially for the first time okay. encourage patient to relax if unable to relax, you can gently comment and encourage patient to share feelings. You can also offer the patient a mirror to observe the exam. Okay, so these are the tips for the successful pelvic examination. Okay. So, this is the patient and the nurse. So, for the patient, avoid uh, you have to instruct to avoid intercourse, douching, or use of vaginal suppositories for 24 to 48 hours before the examination. Okay, you have to instruct the client to empty the bladder before examination, then lie supine with head and the shoulder elevated arms at the side or folded across the chest to enhance eye contact and reduce tightening of abdominal muscle. For the nurse, you have to obtain, of course, permission and, of course, you have to act as chaperone. Explain each step of the examinations in advance. You have to drape the patient from mid-abdomen to knees. Fold the drape between the knees to provide eye contact with patient. You have to warm the speculum with top water and then monitor the comfort of the examination by watching the patient's facial expression. Okay, so let's continue for uh, rape victims. Okay, it requires a special evaluation, special a uh, rape kit or chain of custody for evidence. And then for the equipment, you will need light, vaginal speculum of appropriate size, water-soluble lubricants, supplies for specimens and cultures. In positioning the client, you can drape the patient appropriately, assist the patient into the lithotomy position, and assist placing feet in stirrups. Have patients lie down to end of the table and support the head with pillow. Okay, for the external examination, you have to assess the sexual maturity of an adolescent patient. Is there present of pubic hair? And then in examining the external genitalia, you have to include the following uh, parts or structure. The mons pubis, the labia, the perineum, the labia minora, the clitoris, the urethral meatus, vaginal opening, or introitus. Is there any inflammation, ulceration, discharge, swelling, lacerations, bruising, or is there a presence of nodules? Okay, so these are the, the common findings or lesions of the vulva, vulva. So we have here the epidermoid cyst. So as you can see here, it is a small, a firm, round cystic nodule in the labia that suggests an epidermal or epidermoid cyst. So these are usually yellowish in color. Uh, so you have to look for the dark punctum. Uh, marking the black opening of the gland. So here, another um, lesions of the vulva, we have here venereal or venereal wart, or also known as condyloma acuminatum. 
Okay, it is a mortal lesions on the labia and within the vestibule are often um, affected or due to from infection with papilloma or papilloma virus. So another lesions of the vulva you can see here the syphilitic genre or uh, this is actually a um, firm painless ulcer from or due to a primary syphilis forms uh, usually appears after 21 days of exposure to treponema pallidum okay this may remain hidden or undetected in the vagina and it usually heals regardless of treatment within three to six weeks and another abnormality here is the uterine prolapse uh, that occurs when the uterus protrudes into the vagina so another lesions of the vulva we have our genital herpes okay it is a shallow Okay, meron siyang shallow ulcers on a red basis, no? Uh, point to infection from genital herpes simplex virus 1 or 2. The ulcers may take 2 to 4 weeks to heal. Okay, so we have another abnormality here, the Bartholin gland infection. So the causes of Bartholin gland infection include trauma gonococci anaerobes like bacterioids and peptostreptococci and chlamydia trachomatis okay so okay so for the internal examination so it is important to visualize the vagina and the cervix and then the equipment that you will need are light and speculum so you have to inspect or you have to check for vaginal muscle tone color ulcerations inflammations discharge masses in the vagina or on the cervix you can obtain specimen for pap smear or papa knee Colau smear. So manual palpation of internal organs you okay, can position okay or you have I mean you can check no kung merong uh, kung saan yung uh, position, size, mobility, shape, regularity or is there masses and tenderness. So these are the example of vaginal discharge. This first image is due to three commonas vaginalis or a protozoan that often but not always uh, acquired through sexually. It is yellowish green or gray, possibly a frothy and often profuse and pulled in the vaginal fornix. Okay, so another example of vaginal discharge here is the candida albicans or a yeast. There is a normal growth or overgrowth of vaginal flora. So many factors pred pred uh, that pred predispose in this kind of discharge includes antibiotic therapy. It is white and curdy, may be thin but typically thick, not as profuse as in trichomonal infection. So not malodorous. So Another here is the bacterial overgrowth that probably from anaerobic bacteria often transmitted sexually. It is gray or white thin, uh, homogeneous, malodorous, coats the vaginal wall, usually not profuse, and may be minimal. So let's have exercise again, no? Mind exercise or icebreaker. So to ensure accurate findings on a pelvic examination, the patient should do which of the following before the examination? A. Avoid douching 24 to 48 hours before examination. B. Bring the first urine void of the morning. C. Douch with a solution provided six hours before examination. All right, so I'll give you five seconds. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. 
Okay, so let's check. Okay, so the correct for the correct answer. So to ensure accurate findings on the pelvic examination, the patient should do which of the following before the examination? Iba binasa na natin kanina yan. Okay. Okay. So, A. Avoid douching 24 to 48 hours before examination is the correct answer. To obtain accurate specimens, uh, the patient should avoid douching 24 to 48 hours before the examination and also avoid intercourse or use of vaginal, vaginal suppositories and should empty bladder. Okay, in recording your findings, okay, record the pelvic examination. For the female genitalia, you have to uh, record the structures, the color, is there any inflammation, discharge, the color and the order of the discharge, the size, and tenderness. So, moving on to our health promotion and counseling. So, after doing our health history taking and um, physical examination, so based on the data you've gathered. So, the following important topics for health promotion and counseling includes the following. Of course, reproductive system education, changes with menopause, kung ano mga changes, expected normal changes, Cervical cancer screening, early prenatal care, options for family planning, and STIs including HIV. Okay, so to continue with our health promotion and counseling, so we have to remember that an accurate understanding of the normal appearance and function of the reproductive systems will enable the woman to take control control of her reproductive health through family planning and disease prevention. Of course, to recognize pregnancy problems and maturational changes and of course to seek appropriate care in a timely fashion. So, uh, you have to, for the reproductive system education, you have to ensure understanding of the appearance and the function. This enables control of the reproductive system and encourage seeking appropriate care in a timely function. Okay? So, you have to explain also or inform the patient about psychological and physiological uh, changes during um, menopause. There are mood shifts hot flashes, and accelerated bone loss, and bulbo vaginal atrophy. So, para magawa din natin ng paraan on how to promote para may iwasan to. Okay? For the cervical cancer sp uh, screening, the pap smear, and the HPV infection, you have to explain the following for the risk factors for cervical cancer and the other risk factors. So, the risk factors for cervical cancer includes failure to undergo screening or pap smear with multiple sex partners, not only one, not satisfied with one only. Other risk factors such as smoking and immunosuppression. For the cervical cancer screening, the pap smear and the HPV infection, okay, so the other risk factors include long-term use of oral contraceptives, co-infection with chlamydia, parity, okay, nakailang pagbuk, nakailan yung um, viable pregnancy, and then the, the prior cervical cancer and genetic polymorphisms. Okay, so this table shows the cervical cancer screening guidelines for average risk woman. Uh, this was um, done during 2015, no? based on 2015 new table. So we have here the variable and recommendation. So the age to begin screening, so much better the to, or the recommended age is 21 years old. 
Okay, the screening method and intervals, so it depends to the age of the client. So, it's here. So, age to end the screening. So, para mag-stop na. If the age is more than 65 years old, assuming three consecutive uh, findings or result is negative. Okay, screening after hysterectomy is not recommended with removal of cervix. Kapag kasama yung cervix, so not recommended na yung screening. Okay, so part of our health promotion and counseling is about the HPV vaccine. Okay, so the routine vaccination for girls and boys are during ages 11 and 12. So it should have three doses or a three dose series over six months before the first sexual encounter. For catch-up vaccination, okay, these are for females aged up. 13 to 26 and males age 13 to 21 without prior vaccination or completed the three closed dose. For the males age, uh, ages 22 to 25, maybe uh, they can be vaccinated. If females or males reach age 27, they can receive the final doses now. Okay. So, part of our HPV vaccine, you have to assess if it is gay and bisexual, okay, men, and, or for the immunocompromised individuals. So, the recommended through age 26 if they have not been fully vaccinate, vaccinated when younger. So, there is a need to start vaccination early. Okay, cervical cancer screening is important for women. Uh, or vaccines does not prevent all HPV subtypes. You have to remember that as also. Consistent use of condoms does not eliminate the risk of cervical HPV infection. So, take note of that. You can also share this information, of course, to your patient. So, moving on to early prenatal care. So, early prenatal care usually lowers perimortality infant weight. May iwasan yung pagkamatay no? uh, ng mga baby sa loob ng tiyan ni mommy. So, gynecology exams before pregnancy help identify potential problem in the preparation for pregnancy. Okay, stopping alcohol and tobacco use. Of course, uh, weight loss. Dapat mag-practice ng weight loss na. And then, uh, taking folic acid and calcium. Pero yung weight loss, ha, depende pa rin yun sa age or depende kung nakakilang weeks, no? Kasi when you reach your level 2 uh, during your MCN, matututunan ninyo doon kung ilan ba, kailan ba dapat mag-weight loss ang mom, kailan ba dapat magdadagdag siya ng, ng food kasi dalawa na sila, okay? So, kailangan niya ng energy, of course, kailangan niya ng vitamins, kailangan niya para, ng food para um, magkaroon siya ng fuel, of course, meron na siyang, uh, kini, uh, meron din develop na bata or another person within the mom. Okay? So, you can also talk about options for family planning, okay? Make sure to respect the patient's opinions and desires. All you have to do is just to, to explain all the options for family planning, okay? Know the various options, again, available. Match the patient with the best option they can use. And then, the patient should understand the timing of ovulation and menstrual cycle. Continue use of preferred met method superior to abandonment of more effective method and then of course you have to ensure confidential setting when you are doing the procedure especially for the ten teenagers okay so moving on to uh, sexually transmitted infections and hiv infection so in united states um their rate highest in industrialized world. So, um, Chlamydia trachomatis is the most commonly reported. So, the infection rates is usually highest in women 20 to 24 years old and second highest in women 
between 15 to 19 years old and to those African American and American Indian Alaska Native women with highest infection rates. Sila yung may, uh, may uh, highest infection rate. Okay, continuation of our sexually transmitted infections and HIV infection. So, most of the cases are actually undiagnosed. So, hindi natin alam talaga na meron nang may HIV dyan. So, lahat naman tayo natatakot talaga. Untreated, usually 10% to 15% uh, develop pelvic inflammatory disease. And 8 to 40%, there is a risk of tubal infertility. Mahirapan ng mga kuntis. And then the gonorrhea, so similar to statistics no, in the previous, ano, um, or similar statistics in U.S. And syphilis is less common. Okay, so the centers for disease control, STI and HIV screening recommendations in the 2014 are the following, no? For chlamydia and gonorrhea screening should be done annually for all sexually active women greater than 25 years old and older women with risk factors such as new or multiple sex fact, uh, partners or partner infected with STI. Okay, so yet to your my recommendations. Okay, so to continue with our HIV uh, infection, over 1.2 million Americans are infected with HIV. And then 14% are unaware of their infection. And the higher risk are the gay men, bisexual men, and other MSM of all ethnicities. So 19% of new infections are women with heterosexual contact and injection drug use. And 25% of individuals living with HIV are women. Okay, the CDC reports women are not accessing healthcare are undertreated. So, warning indications for HIV testing in women, lalo na yung may recurrent Volvo candidiasis, concurrent STIs, abnormal pap smears, and HPV infection. Okay, so of course, uh, to continue pa sa ating HIV infection, we have a patient counseling. So, assess the risk factors for STIs and HIV. So, effective clinician counseling, no, dapat uh, you should show respect, compassion, non-judgmental attitude, use of open-ended questions, and understandable questions. Okay, again, the CDC recommends interactive patient-centered counseling. Alright, so another question to test or to keep you awake. Okay, the most important risk factors for cervical cancer is A. Early sexual activity B. Nutritional status C. Smoking the infection with high risk strains of HPV. So, what's your answer? Okay, you have five seconds. Alright, so let's check. Okay. So, the most important risk factors for cervical cancer is infection or letter D, infection with high risk strains of HPV. All choices are risk factors, but the most important is an infection with a high risk strain of HPV. So, this ends the first part of our physical examination on the reproductive system. And this is the reference. Please uh, watch the second part of this topic. So again, before ending this presentation, let me share to you again the quotes from Luke chapter 1 verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So keep fighting lang tayo 
Okay, malapit na, no? Uh, one week left for lectures and then next or the following week after our lecture is already your final examination week. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.